In our previous video, we introduced the idea of uh, market measures and accounting measures for performance. We called those summary measures. They were just one thing. And we said, look, if we measure this one thing, that's sort of a, a good way to review how a company or a division of a company is doing. And it's definitely widely used because it's cheap, it's quick, it's easy, and it generally works pretty well. But we said there's big drawbacks to doing that as well. And so one of the ways that people have attempted to solve the drawbacks, or at least uh, minimize the drawbacks, is by implementing something called the balanced scorecard for performance measurement. And what the balanced scorecard says is these measures that we're looking at, like stock price, so let me just write them out stock price, ROI, return on investment, RI, residual income, and any other sort of measure like that, that's really good and we should be measuring it. That's when we look at our company from a financial perspective. That's totally appropriate to do. Stock price, ROI, and residual income are totally appropriate. But our company is more than just financial. So we should be looking at our company from more than just the financial perspective. I, I, I want to make this a little bigger. This is important stuff. Uh, let me make this bigger. There we go. So the financial perspective is just one perspective. We've got other things to worry about. Uh, a big other thing we want to worry about is just customers. So we should examine our company and we should look at things not just from a financial perspective, we should look at our company from a customer perspective. What does that mean? Well, we should look at things like customer satisfaction, we should look at things like customer retention. And we should look at things like customer growth. And that, that may, in fact, be a financial measure. But those are all things we should consider. But not only should we look at our, our financial perspective and customer perspective, to be well-rounded, we should look at our own selves, not just outside the company, not just how the stock market thinks of us or how customers think of us. How do we uh, think of ourselves or how, do, how are we doing? So we should look at things from an internal processes perspective. And that's mostly what I, when I think of internal processes, I think of efficiency. So, um, you know, uh, uh, turnaround time. Somebody orders something from us, how quickly does it take us to turn it around, right? The faster, the better. Uh, other measures of internal efficiency. I'm trying to think here of internal processes. Um, uh, let me think. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm blanking here. I'm going to come back to it. Uh, and let's look at our first perspective, learning and growth. And generally, we call that employee learning and growth. And so things that will measure related to employee learning and growth or things that are in indicators of employee learning and growth are like training time, right? More training time means our employees are learning and growing. Employee satisfaction. If employees are able to grow in a job, uh, that's good. Um, uh, let's think of another one. Uh, employee turnover, probably related to employee satisfaction. So, okay, here are our perspectives. Employee learning growth, internal processes. I thought of a couple others. I was thinking about my employees. Um, I was thinking of uh, customer waiting time. You know, whether it's waiting in line at a supermarket, if we're running a supermarket, if it's waiting on hold, if we're running a call line. Um, you know, number of customers served per hour if we're customer service or number of uh, uh, products you know made per hour for manufacturing you know speed types of things product quality so error rate or you know for 
making a, a product and there's flaws in it what's the what percentage of the time are there flaws in it so these are all internal process types of things we might measure so again we've got employee learning and growth internal process customer and financial what the balance scorecard says is don't measure just one. In fact, financial perspective might be the least useful one of these to measure. They call this a lag indicator. They say, look, it works this way. Uh, these three are called lead indicators. And the one on the right is called a lag indicator because if I have, if you just think about this logically, right? Employee learning and growth. Okay, I spend more time training and I have happier employees. If I spend more time training, I have happier employees. That is going to lead to better internal processes. My employees are going to perform better. If they're happier and they're well-trained, they're going to be good performing employees. And that's going to relate to, let's just focus on the one, customer waiting time. So the customer time, say we're a supermarket, the customer time standing in a line goes down. If my, if my cashiers are well-trained and they're happy, the time that customers stand in line will go down because my cashiers are going to work quicker and more efficiently and more accurately probably. So if I say training time is going to lead to lower customer wait time, that's going to lead to higher customer satisfaction, which is going to lead to customer growth. If customers are happier, they're going to come more often and they're going to tell their friends to come. And that at last will lead to a bump in share price when I sell more stuff, right? It's going to lead to sales growth, which is going to lead to a stock price gain. So when we think about a balanced scorecard, if we're designing one for our company, we're thinking, okay, not only what do I want to do in each category, almost as a silo, like not only do I just want to look at employee learning and growth and, and improve my employees, but how is that employee learning and growth going to lead to better internal processes? And I want to measure all of these things. It's not enough to say, okay, training time. Like I want to have more training time. What does that mean? Maybe every employee, maybe. So rather than training time, that's a nice thing, but we got to set a target. So every single cashier does a five hour training session. Okay, so every single cashier that works for my company does a five hour training session. Then all of a sudden, okay, the training time kind of objective is satisfied, right? If every single cashier does not do the five hour session, I need to hold somebody accountable. That's what this balanced scorecard is all about. It's saying, look, if I'm doing this, if I say I want to do it, I'd better do it. And if I say I want to do it, I better make sure somebody's accountable to make this thing happen. So the balanced scorecard says measure more than just the financial perspective. We need to look at things from an employee learning and growth perspective, a, an internal processes perspective, and a customer perspective. And that's going to happen. I'm going to improve on all of these factors before any of those financial measures get better. So why measure the financial thing? That's just measuring the outcome. That's measuring sort of the output. Why not measure the inputs, the things that are causing what I want? I want this. This stuff I want. I want. We all want. But why not measure the stuff that's going to lead to what we want. And so the balance scorecard says, look at those things that lead to what we want. We want more money, we want more profit, or whatever it is we happen to want. Look at all the things that lead up to what we want, measure those, and really evaluate people and managers on how they're doing uh, as it relates to this stuff more than this stuff. All right, folks, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one.